Exciting video for you today. I am showing you Arturia's brand new Mini Freak. So the buildup's been pretty intense for this synthesizer and a lot of people predicting what is going to come out. Well, this Mini Freak is just one of a few things that they've announced today. And I've got some other videos that I'll do with some new software and the new controller as well. But the Mini Freak to me is the most exciting release today. That's for sure. Kind of like a a step up in some ways from the Micro Freak, which I've got a video on in the past. And this one adds a whole bunch of new things that the Micro Freak doesn't have, but it also has some differences. There are some things that aren't in this synth that are in the Micro Freak. I know I heard some people thinking that the Super Freak was coming. So maybe in the, maybe we'll get a Super Freak one day. I don't know, something in between the Poly Brute and the Mini Freak, that'd be pretty sweet. I've got a video on the Poly Brute which I'll put a link to in the description. Probably my favorite synthesizer I've ever worked with. And I'm going to do some more videos on it, I promise. But it's pretty neat to have a lot of that technology built into the Mini Freak. To me, the thing that makes this synthesizer so exciting is this Mini Freak V that comes with the synthesizer, but hasn't come out yet. And I'm told that in the next few weeks or months, we should get this new Mini Freak V virtual instrument. So you've got this incredible piece of hardware, and then you get a virtual instrument equivalent that will mirror everything you're doing on the hardware. And that was my biggest complaint about the Micro Freak was the interfacing between the hardware and the software, you know, so storing patches, downloading patches onto your Micro Freak, takes a long time and kind of clunky. We don't have it yet, so all I can do is show you a picture of it. And there it is right there. So we can see that we've got the two oscillators. That's a new thing that's exclusive to the Mini Freak compared to the Micro Freak. We've got the two oscillators. You've got all of your settings for that. We've got the filters. It is such a nice looking interface. I'm really impressed with that. Anyways, we can see we've got an advanced view that will probably open up some window with some advanced stuff that maybe we can't even access from the front of the synthesizer itself. We've got the sequencer settings, which is also really exciting. We've also got the three different things we can control with the touch strips that we've got on the side, as opposed to a traditional mod wheel and pitch bend. You know, this is going to be a brilliant way for you to design patches. The thing you're going to find with these LFOs and envelopes and stuff that we'll have a look at today is you're going to get some pigments like interfacing between the software and the hardware. So you can really think of it in some ways like a version of pigments that we have built into hardware. So just so you know, I'm not getting paid to make the video. They send me the hardware for free though. And I do have affiliate links to some music stores so you can help me out if you want to pick up the synthesizer from something like Toman. And as you'll see, I also created my own custom wood stand for this and just took a couple of pieces of wood left over from my shelves. I've got a video on that. Make sure you check out that video. So I just cut them at the right height and stained them and then added this little brace in the middle. And now I've got kind of a nice little stand that props it up for my videos and makes it a little bit easier for me to see it. And speaking of wood, I should probably show you this little laptop case here that I got from this company called Glitty. So I'm going to put a link to them in the description, not actually sponsoring this video, but they did send it to me for free. But I contacted them because I love the look of it. The wood is really thin and their cases are just beautiful. So really fits into my studio nicely. They do iPad cases and phone cases as well. So make sure you check them out. So now let's play with the Mini Freak. I'll show you some of my highlights. At the end of the video, we'll just start playing with some patches here in machine and record something and see what happens. And if you want to just jump to that, I'll put some chapters in below. Okay, so we'll start with just a, a basic initialized patch here. And we're just going to look at the oscillator. So we'll start with the fact that we've got two oscillators. And that's something we didn't have on the Micro Freak. Super welcome addition. All, right, all you have to do to get the second oscillator working is go and turn up the volume. So we can see this tiny little slider on the right hand side showing us the volume. So let's turn that one down and we'll go back to oscillator one. Just quickly talk about the types. Very similar selection of choices here for the oscillator that are slightly different from the Micro Freak. And one thing you'll notice is that there is no wave table oscillator choice on the Mini Freak. So whether that's something they add in the future, I'm not sure, or whether that's something that they just want to have be special in the Micro Freak, 
The Microfreak also has the vocoder input, and this one doesn't have the vocoder as well. So two things that are missing from the Mini Freak. I may be wrong, so if somebody knows differently, go ahead and set me straight in the comments, and I'll pin that or put it in the description. But the fact that you do have a second oscillator, so you can use oscillator 2 to process oscillator 1, and it's got some really interesting things like comb filter, a destroy phaser filter, surgeon filter, like a parametric EQ, and multi-filter, and then frequency modulation and amplitude modulation as well. So those are the things that are kind of extra with oscillator 2. But if we go back to oscillator 1 and just look at the different types in here, you can see like if you choose basic waves, this is going to morph between a sawtooth and a square wave. And then this shape right here is going to add the sub. And I noticed right away, I thought, okay, that's, that's very similar to my Juno synthesizer. So something tells me that is kind of an imitation of the way the old Juno synthesizers would work. Super Waves is going to add some copies that are a little bit out of tune. So go back to basic. And it's even got the sub. So this one here adds the sub. Pretty cool. Just like the Juno. And we go to Super Wave. So yeah, we can go through the different waveforms and we can detune them. The amount of detune on this Super Wave. Kind of like a unison. Harmo is adding harmonics, so it's like additive synthesis. So let's try. We're getting into physical modeling with Car Plus Strong. And then onto a bunch of other ones. Virtual Analog, a Wave Shaper, which adds wave folding. Just do a little, a little YouTube search on that, and you'll see some nice videos where people show like a waveform. And then as you crunch that waveform up towards the ceiling, it starts folding in on itself and creating other harmonics. Interesting way of creating sound. Two operator FM, so it's FM synthesis, but only with two operators. And something like the DX7 would have, uh, I can't remember how many operators. Is it eight? Something like that. Somebody write it in the, uh, in the comments. And then we got formant kind of a vocal type sound and then the speech which is actually more like the speech on like the speak and spell toy and we can process audio input through oscillator one so let's just go with the super wave right now so that we can talk about the filter analog filter and this one all the traditional stuff you'd expect with a filter crank up the resonance and then we can mess with the types of filters that we've got. Low pass filter, band pass filter, high pass filter. And low pass being the traditional one. And then here we can choose how much of the envelope is actually controlling the filter. So it's just talking about this envelope right here. And so if we go and play with this, let's crank this up and start playing with the envelope. Let's set the sustain level really low. Now we can hear the filter being controlled by the envelope. Let's turn the envelope setting off. And now we're just hearing the filter as it is. If we want the envelope not to control the filter, we just put it at 12 o'clock. And then now we can control the cutoff the traditional way. Now would be a good time to go and talk about the mod matrix, because this is connecting all of these parameters to some form of modulation, some way of changing a parameter. And it's really easy to use this modulation matrix. I just go over and cycle with this matrix thing here until I get to the LFO one, set that to the cutoff. So I click the button, and then as soon as I click it, it allows me to set the level. So let's do that. Let's crank it all the way up. So now we've got this LFO pulsing because we've assigned it to the cutoff. And we can influence how this change is happening. So right now LFO1 is selected. I go to the rate and you can see we've, we can make this fluctuation happen faster or slower. So let's try a different wave. We've got triangle, a sawtooth wave starting at full and dropping down and then repeating. Square, basically like up and down. But I always like showing the square wave 
with pitch. That's where you can go and use an LFO and make it sound kind of like a police siren. So if I want to get rid of this LFO on the cutoff, I can just hold it down and it resets it. So now let's go to LFO one and assign that to pitch. And we'll crank that up by a few semitones. There we go. Now we've got this LFO changing the pitch of both of our oscillators. So watch what happens with that. Go, go back to our square wave. Here's our, our sawtooth. Again, we hear it raising the pitch and dropping it off on a ramp. And then here, if we've got it on a square wave, make it go faster or slower. Next, we've got sample and hold, which is kind of a random. And so you get those like computer, digital computer sounds from the you know 50s and 60s. And then the shaper is probably the most exciting one because we can go in and create these custom shapes of LFOs. So you're going to see some patches and think that you've got some kind of sequencer thing going on, but it's probably actually just an LFO with a shaper on it. So we can go to shaper and we're going to hold shift. Now when I turn this knob, we get different shape presets that pop up. And something tells me once we get the software hooked up, we're going to be able to make really cool custom shapes in LFOs save those and then really easily load them on patches as well. Like here's an interesting one. This one says strum. And you hear this kind of brum, brum, brum thing that's happening. That's kind of cool. So it's not a great patch to try this on, but just imagine what you could do with that. You could add that at, at the beginning of a sound and you're thinking, well, but isn't an LFO just repeating? And that's where we can go and choose how an LFO is behaving. We can go over to, we hold shift and turn the trigger knob and we get to choose how it is re-triggering. So is it running free? Is it just gonna keep going? And no matter where it's going, it's, you're just gonna jump in on that moving sort of train or does it start every time you play a note or play a bunch of notes? Watch what happens if we set it to LFO retrig one. So it's, it's now just more like a, a change at the beginning of your sound. And uh, I think probably the one you're going to do the most is just mono keyboard. So you can hear with that one, it doesn't matter when I play the note. The, the actual LFO change is happening in sync with itself. If I change that to poly keyboard, you can hear that the LFO is different for each note depending on when I played it. Okay, that's probably enough with the LFO. Let's just clear that for now. So this envelope button right here is where you're going to choose the type of patch. So is it monophonic or is it polyphonic? Or is it paraphonic? And the synth has six voices, but if you put it in paraphonic mode, you'll actually get 12 voices out of it. So it's possible to get really rich full note chords out of the synthesizer compared to the four voice paraphonic micro freak. And then we also have a unison setting, which adds a few voices out of tune with each other. We'll go back to polyphonic for now. And here we're gonna play with the envelope. This one, I love just having these little visuals showing you what you're doing with your patch. Cause especially if you're learning this stuff, set it to a quick attack. It goes up to the level really quickly, drops down to a sustain level. So attack, decay and release are all time values, but sustain is the only one that is actually a level value because it's always gonna race up to the top full volume, you get to choose if it drops down to a, a lower volume after that. And then of course we have the release time, which is how long does the note take to stop making sound. And of course we have this cycling envelope that we also had in the Micro Freak. And that one allows you to have an envelope shape that is just gonna keep repeating over time if you want. So you can set it to loop. Let's put the cycling envelope on cutoff. So we're gonna bring this back till I get to cutoff, hit the button and crank up 
the level so that we're making some kind of change. So it's looping over time. So let's see what happens if we play with the rise. It's kind of weird. It says rise, fall, and hold, as opposed to attack, sustain, and release. Kind of switched as well. Choose rise. And you'll see with this loop thing here, so you can hear as I'm playing a note, it's still going up and down. In other words, it's just running in the background. If I press set it to loop, it's going to start that cycling envelope from scratch every time I play a note. So there's different situations where you'd want both. And then of course, if I set it to envelope, happens once and that's it. And then we can play with the hold. And then it stays at that level until I release. That's running just as a typical filter envelope now. So next we're going to look at the effects. And again, this is probably my favorite feature of this synthesizer. So you can see we've got three effects slots. You can put one of a bunch of effects in any of these slots. You can't have two reverbs, which I found interesting. But, uh, right now it's set to chorus, so I can just go and start changing and looking at the different effects we've got. Chorus, phaser, flanger, distortion, bit crusher, EQ, multiband compression. So all of this stuff is now available on your patch. You can change the routing of it. You can use the reverbs and delays as insert effects or send effects. So you can actually process the whole thing through the reverb, or you can just send a portion of it to the reverb as you're hearing the dry signal as well. Uh, right now, if I want to mess around with the reverb, I just have to get to that slot and click the button itself to turn it on. Turn it off, turn it on. So now that it's on, now I can play with the decay, the how long it takes for the reverb to die out. I can play with the intensity. So this is how much of the high frequencies are resonating in the room. Let's take it way down. So that's much brighter. And then here, turn the damping up. Now it's just the low frequencies. So another thing we can do is hold the shift knob and now you can choose the subtype of reverb. So here we can go to something like a room. Let's go to room. And we can go to hall. Probably my favorite. Long. Oh, that's amazing. Let's try flanger. Turn that on. And now if I hold shift and turn the flanger, default and default sync. Let's try this one. Now if I play with the time, you can see that it's, it's syncing to the tempo of your project. So now you can have your flanger syncing to the tempo of your patch or of your project. And in this case, I've got it set up in machine and it's actually syncing to the tempo of machine, which is amazing. So all of this stuff, tempo syncable, and you can even see that it's syncing right there. And if I go to the delay, we can do the same thing. We can press shift and hold this, turn this knob, and now we've got digital sync. And then we change it to quarter notes. And then we already talked about the LFO section. And then the other big things that we have in here are things like macros. So now if I click over on the macros and hold shift, and assign. All we need to do is move any knob and we will assign it to the macros. So I'm just going to go to timbre and adjust it. We'll crank it all the way up. And now this little slider is assigned to timbre. And then we've also got arpeggiator and a sequencer. So let's turn on the arpeggiator. And so, of course, we can do the different versions of the arpeggiator. And random. Now order that you play them. And then we've got... Really cool. I like that poly one. 
Okay, so now we can add with the frogs, we can add more octaves. And then octave four. So those are the things I understand about the arpeggiator. We'll dig into those a little bit more in the future. And then the sequencer is a really neat feature as well in this one. And it's beautiful because we've got 16 steps times these four right here. It's going to be a lot easier to program in your own sequences on this. And I think the sequencer is probably going to be one of the most powerful features of the synthesizer. I don't have the manual on it yet. And uh, I don't and I want to do a totally dedicated video to it because here's the thing you can think about with the sequencer is you can program in all of your steps and then they just show up as MIDI information in a program like machine. What you can do with the sequencer in this one though is you can apply things like custom filter settings to individual steps. So one step could have a filter open, the next step could have the filter closed. This is all stuff that we can get into and, and work with in software like pigments, but to have the ability to do it on a hardware synthesizer is really, really cool. You can program in your own steps. So I can just press the record button and I'm just gonna start putting in a random And now let's press play. So now what we could do is we could go and apply some custom modulation on certain steps. So I'm going to go to modulation. I'm going to hit the record button and then I'm going to go to step one and we're going to adjust the cutoff way down here. And then we're going to go to some of these ones in the middle and we're going to adjust the cutoff getting a little bit bigger. So now we've just applied some custom modulation through the sequencer on individual notes. So this is going to get really powerful, really cool stuff. Anyways, that just about does it for my overview of the really obviously incredible features of this new synthesizer. So let's have a playthrough of some of the patches just for fun. And one of the most beautiful things is the fact that we have effects now. So let's try Krusty Pluck. <laughs> A really neat feature of this is if you hold shift and start turning the knob, you can choose a preset filter and just say, okay, only show me the pads. And if I click that, now all I'm going to go through is pads on the patch list. Really simple way to get through patches really quickly. I absolutely love that. <laughs> Okay, so this one's an actual sequence. And I've got my machine set up here so that it's actually syncing to the tempo. Oh man, that's so good. Super cool. Watch what happens if I change the tempo in machine. And as you can imagine, you can, with the sequences, you can go over to the menu so I can press uh, Shift Utility and I can go to preset operations and in here I can go preset copy and then I'm just going to go just to the sequence and it's going to copy the sequence and then now I can paste that over into a totally different patch. So if I really like this rhythm, I can make my own patch and apply that rhythm or that sequence perfectly to the new patch. And you can hear that that one has swing applied to it, which is perfect for my style of music. Let's try some of the lead. Tempo up. By the way, you would adjust tempo over here if you weren't synced to the tempo of a project. It's 
new effects just make these patches sound so good. Okay, now we're just gonna make a little bit of music with this thing and machine. And so the way I've done it in machine is I've gone through and turn on send clock because we want to send clock to this device so that it can actually respond to tempo changes and also make sure that the mini freak MIDI is turned on under input and output. And then also go to your track and make sure it's receiving MIDI input and output for the Mini Freak. But now let's go over to our patch and let's find a good patch. I really like this ecstatic patch. Okay, so that chopped off my first note. So I'm just gonna copy a note over here and then we're gonna turn off the sequencer. So that sounds good. I'm gonna take that, go Command C, and I'm gonna paste that here. And I just want this to be maybe, let's try something like this. Sounds perfect. I'm gonna go put a little beat in and then we're gonna find some other patches. So I've just added a beat in from the expansion Concrete Sun. So what we need to do every time we work with a synthesizer that's just one synth that isn't multi-timbral is we have to turn this music into audio. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna go over to this group itself and I can actually record the input of it onto sound slot number two. All we have to do on machine is make sure when we go to this sampling menu, that it's capturing the audio from wherever our synthesizer is inputting audio into our computer. So, and this is coming into seven and eight, so I need to set it to input four left and right, because that's where seven and eight are on my interface. And then make sure I've got it set to four bars and sync. And now all I have to do is press start and press start my song. And then now I'm just gonna mute the MIDI information that's on slot number one there because I don't want that to play along right now. Let's go over to our synth and let's try a pad out. Now we're gonna go find a bass, so we'll filter again according to bass and open jam bass. Let's try that out. Go back to our filters and we'll find a lead. And don't forget with the software, we're gonna get really nice patch browsing, I'm sure, with the virtual instrument because we'll be able to go more than just categories, we'll be able to do metadata. It's gonna be amazing. Okay, so I've got a fun lead patch here, Lola Seed it's called, and I'm just gonna play a little solo. Thanks so much for watching the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell. I just hit 60,000 subscribers right before I started filming this. So thanks so much to everybody who's been supporting me all along and to all my new subscribers as well. So anyways, thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.